You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, folks, we have a lot to uh, discuss tonight. And it's really a continuation of what you heard last night. And I hope you all have pen and paper and you're prepared to uh, listen. And I'm going to do a lot of talking for a while. And then, if there's time, we'll open the phones. I don't know if there's going to be time or not. Also, I will not be here tomorrow night. Tim and uh, Pete will be back, or just Pete, or just Tim, or a combination of both. I don't know which, because I'm going to be in Mesa, Arizona, which is really, people who live in Mesa don't like to hear this, but it's really a suburb of Phoenix. <coughs> and uh, I'll be speaking at Campaign USA. Mr. Red Beckman will be there, Dr. Gene Schroeder, John B. Nelson, and yours truly. Also, Carl Klang will be there, and uh, I have to apologize to Carl. I had not mentioned his name except the first couple of times that I talked about this, and uh, it's mainly because when I'm uh, not because Carl's not important or that his contribution isn't going to be just as good as anyone else's simply because when I'm doing a, a spot like this for something uh, that I feel important, I look at what stands out on the page. And they printed Carl's name down here in, in the, sort of under the uh, big box that contains the information. And I just simply overlooked it. So Carl and Sonny, I want to apologize to you. And uh, let everybody out there know that they will be at the Campaign USA in Mesa this weekend. December the 10th, 1994, from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. at the Mesa Amphitheater, 201 North Center Street, Mesa, Arizona. Advanced tickets are $15, $20 at the door. I don't know why it is, folks, but everywhere I go, people who do these things always give you a break on advanced tickets, and very few people ever buy advanced tickets, and everybody shows up at the door. I almost canceled an event one time because only 15 uh, tickets were sold, and uh, it was about uh, 1,500 miles away, and quite frankly, uh, it wouldn't have done anybody any good to spend all that money to get there if only 15 people were going to show up. But I didn't cancel, and when I got there, almost a 1,000 people showed up and walked in, and uh, that was really strange. The same thing happened in Salt Lake City, Utah and uh, literally filled the salt dome from people who just walked up and purchased their ticket. Now, I have nothing to do with these tickets or anything, folks. I'm an invited speaker. I go there and speak. I'm not being paid. The money goes to promote constitutional government and to help further the activities of this group and, of course, pay for the uh, Mesa Amphitheater and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, they are putting us up in a nice hotel room. Uh, and uh, that's nice. If you want information, call 1-800-REFOUND. 1-800-REFOUND. If you're in Phoenix, you can, uh, let me see, you can get tickets from uh, Campaign USA by calling 1-800-REFOUND. You can also get them at any Dillard's box office. There's limited seating, but I understand that the limited seating is, is quite a bit. Uh, and uh, we're expecting about 4,000 people, and many of you who listen to this broadcast will be coming from all over the United States. 
And uh, I look forward to meeting you and shaking your hand. And, uh, of course, I also look forward very much to be um, being able to reach a lot of people who don't listen to shortwave radio but who do come to these events. So I'll see you there Saturday, December the 10th from 2 to 8 p.m. Mesa Amphitheater, 201 North Center Street, Mesa, Arizona. For information, call 1-800-REFOUND. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Constitution Party, ladies and gentlemen, was actually the idea of a man named Aaron Rousseau, a good friend of mine, and many other people, who contacted those of us whom he thought were influential and constitutional in nature, and we became the founders of the Constitution Party. And we hold that our federal government has consistently violated the Constitution of the United States. The Founding Fathers designed the United States government to serve us, the people. It was not designed so that we, the people, would serve government. We no longer wish to see Americans depended upon or enslaved by government. Generations of Republican and Democratic administrations have made it abundantly clear that they are incapable of managing the nation's affairs competently, justly, or legally. The Constitution Party, ladies and gentlemen, is dedicated to ensuring the unalienable right of every American to life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness by defending the Constitution of the United States and making certain that it remains the supreme law of the land. You see, the right to own one's life is a natural right, but it requires the right to freedom and property ownership in order to sustain that life. Therefore, we, the founding members of the Constitution Party, hold that no one has the right to dictate to anyone else how to live. It further maintains that no one holds a higher moral authority to compel anyone else to behave in any particular way. We believe 
that if it is not forbidden by the Constitution or by the state in which you live, then it is your right to do whatever it is that you wish to do as long as you do not hurt the person or the property of anyone else in the doing of it. We maintain that each of you is an individual who has the right to behave according to his or her self-determined moral principles, provided the pursuit of these principles causes no physical harm to any other person or his or her property. The Constitution Party believes that if there is no victim, there is no crime, and that is the way that it should be. That's the way it was set up by our founding fathers. You cannot have a crime if nothing has been damaged. And of course, how can you perpetrate a crime against yourself? The Constitution Party believes that no entity, including a majority of voters or citizens, may take away or violate the rights of an individual, for they are creator-endowed. They are naturally with the person from birth until death. Accordingly, we call for a reordering of national priorities. We fully intend to restore the right of every individual American to be a sovereign citizen, as well as the provision that all 50 states be free from federal interference so they can self-govern. Our goal, you see, is to create a truly free country where people will learn to be responsible for their own welfare, not the fantasy that is bandied about on the lips and tongues of those who portend to be Americans, but would snatch the liberty from their neighbor simply because they do not agree with their philosophy or their religion, or they don't like the color of their skin, or they hate bowling, therefore there should be no bowling alleys in their town. Upon our achieving this goal, we believe, and history has shown, that enterprise will flower. Flower. Have you ever seen the desert after several days of rain? What used to be barren, dusty, sort of ugly place, unless you really like deserts, all of a sudden sprouts and blooms flowers as far as the eye can see. And those plants have to do that because in the desert it may not rain again for a long, long time. They sprout and flower and produce seed. And the insects proliferate and spread the pollen. And life goes on. Well, we believe that's exactly what will happen in this nation upon achieving our goal. And it will create an atmosphere of prosperity, abundance, tolerance, and compassion that the world has never seen before. The Constitution Party believes that we are at the beginning of a movement. A movement, ladies and gentlemen, toward true, real individual freedoms, not some lofty ideal that people talk about, but the actual practice of liberty, as our forefathers planned. You see, we believe that people have had enough of the taxes and the intimidating tactics of an out-of-control, unaccountable government which has lost sight of its role as our servant. We believe it is time again to make the government accountable to us, the American people, all the American people, regardless of race, color, or creed, and to restore our personal freedoms, which have been slowly but systematically taken from us. We believe, you see, that if we as a people fail to act, the course on which the ship of state is currently set is clear, an accelerating, bankrupt, socialist, 
police state. Now I say tonight to all Americans who want sincerely to keep their rights, whether it be the right to speak your mind, the right to keep the money that you earn, all of it, the right to use your property as you wish, the right to have a gun for the defense of your family and from any threat, including government, the right to engage in non-coercive behavior, the right to not wear a seat belt if you do not wish it, or a motorcycle helmet, the right to practice or refrain from practicing any religion, the right to choose a doctor or the medicine of your choice, including alternative medicine, the right to end your life should you so desire, not a doctor, not the state, not some wacko Kevorkian, but you, or the right to begin a life. These, you see, are your personal choices, not the government's. And realizing that with this kind of pure liberty comes a pure and sometimes awesome responsibility to all Americans who feel or who have felt alienated from the politics of our system and are truly tired of being treated like juveniles, we understand your frustration and your desire for change. Come join us. Join us, because we don't care who you are. If you truly understand the Constitution of the United States of America, the Bill of Rights, and what it is really all about, if you want to get away with all this political double-speak rhetoric, all of this political correct gobbledygook, which usually turns out to be a lie, if you want to exercise and be accountable for real liberty and justice for all, come and join us. No matter who you are or what you do, come and join us. It's not whether you're on the left or the right, liberal or conservative. It's your own personal individual rights that truly matter and nothing else. I've sat down with people on the far right, what's called the far right, who would truly enjoy an anarchic world. And I've sat down with people on the far left who have professed that they would love to be ruled under pure communism. And after having sat and talked with them for a while and discussed the true merits and the true intent of the Constitution and its literal interpretation, they have never failed to exact from them the statement that they believe in it, love it, want it, support it, and consider themselves to be true Americans, but they get caught up in all of this other stuff. Usually because they followed some leader blindly, or listened to some rhetoric which dripped with honey and sounded very, very good, but in the actual practice of it turned out to be either unworkable, or it wasn't really honey, it was something like soap. And they spend their life usually in a constant state of disillusion, but always looking for the greener grass over that, that little hill right there. If I can just get over that hill, the grass will be greener than it is here. Not understanding that in the entire history of the world, the entire world, for all of history, all of the thousands of years of man's existence on this planet, the grass has never been greener than right here. Never. No man and no woman who ever lived in this world prior to the formation of this country and the pinning of the Constitution of the United States of America 
has ever been free, lived free, or known true and absolute. Freedom with responsibility under a constitution that protects the rights that give us that freedom and instill upon us that responsibility that in the exercising of our individual rights we not damage or hurt any other individual or their property. Come and join us. Thomas Jefferson once said, A wise and frugal government which shall restrain men from injuring one another shall leave them otherwise free to regulate their own pursuits. And Benjamin Franklin said, and he was a great lover of liberty, when an individual gives up liberty to achieve security, he will end up with neither. So join the people from all walks of life who already have become members of the Constitution Party. Spread the word. Send us a letter, and we'll send you a whole bunch of stuff where you can start to help to set us all free. Return the nation to Republican government is guaranteed to us in the Constitution. Restore the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. And reclaim the penultimate achievement of all humankind upon this earth. The recent elections, ladies and gentlemen, have sent a very powerful and startling message to Washington. Not only did the Republicans win, they trampled the Democrats into the dirt. Was this a watershed event? Are we now on the verge of turning all our problems around? Are things now going to get better in America? Well, don't hold your breath, folks. If you're on the right, you're probably inclined to think so, unless you're one of the ones who know that being on the right is not necessarily any different than being on the left, where Democrats and Republicans are concerned. You might think less government, less taxes, less regulation, less welfare. You might say to yourself, I'm finally getting the government off my back. You're thinking to yourself, and I can read your mind, folks. In fact, I'm looking right into the end of this microphone, right through your radio speaker, and I can see you sitting there. And I can read your mind. I can see the gears turning. You're thinking, no more Big Brother. I'm a happy American. If you're on the left, you're bruised, you're damaged, you're angry, you're disgusted, frustrated, confused, and you're saying to yourself, what happened? What did I do wrong? How did this happen? I mean, the whole nation hates us now. And now where are we headed? And somewhere inside, you're a little terrified of the answer. You're scared. You're afraid that the Republicans are going to take away abortion rights, reverse gun control laws, eliminate welfare programs, show no concern for your rights, put people in jail for smoking pot. You're afraid the religious fundamentalists, regardless of what persuasion, may get some real power. What if the Muslims took over? You're afraid of the right imposing their morality on you. And you're saying, I'm an unhappy person. Oh, my God. Ooh. Help, you're thinking to yourself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you really understood the intent of our founding fathers and the reality of what the Constitution protects that you have already always had, you don't have to worry about most of these things. For all of these things should be decided upon a local 
level and not by big brother, big government. That's our belief. We believe that if a city is made up mostly of religious Christian fundamentalists, that their morality is going to be applied in that city or that county simply because that's the majority of the voters, and anyone who doesn't like to go along with that is free to move somewhere else where maybe the residents are more liberal and you can make your own laws there and everybody in this country can be happy because that's the way it's supposed to be. It is absolute folly to believe that you're going to shove your beliefs and philosophies and religions and views upon racial superiority on other people and they're just going to sit there and let you do it. The end result of that kind of thinking is bloodshed, war, murder, conflict, not just on local levels but on national levels and eventually worldwide. For the Japanese, who believes that the Japanese race is superior, to believe that he will exert that kind of belief upon the other citizens of this nation is pure fantasy. And the same for the white Aryan racist or the black racist who still believes because someone has convinced him that he's still a slave. Not understanding the Constitution. His ancestors may have been slaves, and they may not have had the state's rights or state citizenship endowed upon them when they were freed, and that's why the 14th Amendment to the Constitution was created, to give them the same status as any citizen of any state. But that amendment, ladies and gentlemen, applied only to that person at that time or anyone else who contracts with the federal government to become a 14th Amendment citizen. You see, blacks who were born in states as free people, born in freedom. And you can look in the constitutions of your states, if you don't believe them, for the definition of a citizen, and you'll find that you are citizens of those states. You have the same rights. As anyone else, you are not slaves except in your own minds. And successful blacks are successful because they understand that. They have not imprisoned themselves. And yes, sometimes it's an uphill battle. And yes, sometimes they have to face discrimination. And yes, Folks, so does everybody else in the world on a more or less concentrated scale. But as the years go by, things get better for all of us. Nothing and no disparate, separate philosophies, our races, our creeds, our religions are going to come together and just love each other all the time, any time in the near future. These things take generations of children learning that their parents were wrong. I'm talking to all of you and about all of you. For you all exercise dogmatic intolerance and uh, insatiable desires for superiority over our fellow men and women. And most of us hold those feelings in check and realize that they are wrong and deal with them and don't let them influence our lives or those that we deal with. We don't allow someone else to convince us to put chains upon ourselves. We know our status. Come, join us. Call 1-800-932-9888. Oh, wait a minute. We did away with the 800 number.
can't do that. Let me give you another number in a few minutes. Or maybe not another number, an address. Or maybe a number here. Right after the break. Don't go away, folks. I'll be right back and we'll continue this little chat. No, no, it was a big up on a set. Why not her kids down again? Bad, bad, bad to the bone. Born in the world with a microphone. I say a bad, bad, bad to the bone. Let the bandolier I walk alone. Bad, bad, bad to the bone. Born in the world with a microphone. Bad, bad, bad to the bone. Let the bandolier I walk alone. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda Thompson was supposed to call tonight, and I was going to give her the first few moments of the broadcast. It appears that some things are happening in Indianapolis, Indiana, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. See, I can pronounce it when I take my time. And she's a little worried. I'd say she's a lot worried. You see, the BATF has been at a local army installation there for the last several days practicing raids on a mock-up building. Tonight, there were approximately 80 government and law enforcement cars at the local Ramada Inn, which when queried, stated yes, there were law enforcement there having a meeting, but the meeting ended at 6.30 and the subject was confidential. What does all that mean? I don't know. Also, seven black helicopters have flown in to Indianapolis, according to the reports that we have from our people. So it looks like someone in the vicinity of Indianapolis, Indiana, is targeted for an assault sometime in the near future, maybe even tonight. I don't know. But Linda didn't call. And I don't know why she didn't call. I don't think anything has happened to her. But based upon the attacks and the specific naming of Linda Thompson in both the ATF briefing report and the Anti-Defamation League fact-finding report to all law enforcement in the country, and based upon the fact that Linda called for an armed march in Washington, D.C., and based upon the fact that she has been one of the great movers to instill in the American people the importance of organizing militias. Linda could be the target. So if you belong to the militia anywhere near Indianapolis, Indiana, I would suggest that you prepare to mobilize your people for whatever contingency might present itself, understanding that unless these forces break the law, you can do nothing. But if they do break the law, you can do whatever is necessary. And that is the truth. Now, you wouldn't be hearing things like this. You wouldn't be hearing this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, if it were not for the patriotism and good graces and wonderful people 
who makes Swiss America trading the place, the only place, to deal in precious metals in its many various forms. And there are quite a few different ways that you can utilize or hold or deal in precious metals or use them to manufacture consumable goods. They're experts. They care about all of us. They care about this broadcast. Do you realize what this broadcast has done to their business? <laughs> That's not funny. You know, I, I laugh, but it's not funny. You should think about that. If you derive real worth from this broadcast, patriots and conservatives and constitutionists, like our enemies, had better learn to put their loyalties in their mouth and their money where it will do them the most good and not just shop around where they'll get the cheapest bargain with a company that may not be there tomorrow is no buyback plan has not guaranteed the things that Swiss American is guaranteed and that I have backed with my own personal guarantee you better think about those things I've discovered over the last several years that patriots as a whole are miserly stingy people not all you can never say something that covers a blank at all, but most. And one of the reasons we're in the situation that we're in is because they don't back their causes like our enemies back their causes. And I find that extremely disheartening. And it does not portend well for the future. So, if you've been thinking about your economic security, based upon what you know is sure to come, you had better give them a call. 1-800-289-2646. 1-800-289-2646. Do it now, folks. You'd be glad that you did. Why is it, folks, that we can't all be happy at the same time? I'll tell you why in a nutshell. It's very simple. It's because we all keep attempting to futilely impose our morality on each other. I want you to go to my church. I don't want you in my neighborhood if you're not my color. I don't want you saying that because I don't like it. I don't believe in it. Therefore, you shouldn't be able to say it. Right? Isn't that correct? It is time, ladies and gentlemen, that we all mature, grow up, and stop this insanity that has propelled us to war against each other and kill each other for the entire history of the human race, my God, even monkeys learn quicker than we do. What is wrong with us? It's time that we all realize that we are, each and every one of us, individuals. We're not carbon copies turned out on some machine, and we're going to be different. We're going to look different. We're going to think different. And we own our own lives. We're individuals who must live together. Because there's no bridge to the moon. I can't get up there if I want to. I have to live here with you. 
We have to live together by a common denominator, and that denominator is freedom. Our forefathers knew that. They knew that we couldn't live together unless we gave each other the freedom to be individuals and to have the rights guaranteed to us to be able to pursue the happiness that we as individuals wish, not the happiness that I want you to have. Or that you want me to have, but the happiness that I want me to have. You can't give that to me. And I can't give it to you. I can take it away from you, and you can take it away from me, just simply by doing what we've done throughout the history of the world. Freedom. Freedom to be whoever and whatever we are born to be or choose to be simply because it's what we want to be individually. We must learn to grant others their liberties if we expect our own liberties to be honored. Of all the people in the entire world, I would have expected that Americans would have innately understood this. I don't know why, but I thought when a baby was born in this country, all of these things were just there in its head. I was wrong. And that's the second time I've been wrong. <laughs> we must grant others their liberties if we expect our own liberties to be honored. The alternative is to be constantly fighting and killing and imprisoning and maiming and torturing our neighbors. The proviso, of course, ladies and gentlemen, is that we do not physically harm the person or property of another and that we always be prepared to accept the responsibility and consequences of our own actions. This is not new. This is nothing that I've pulled out of the ether of the universe. Science has already proven there isn't any ether. There might be something else, but there's no ether. And I didn't pull this out of anything like that. It's just simple, smart, Effective, intelligent, that's the way it is. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the very heart and soul, the basis of the Constitution for the United States of America. The one and only document, the one and only anything that can bring us all together. How infinitely lucky can we be? And how long are we going to be stupid in this regard? You see, we don't have to reinvent it. We don't have to recreate it. We just need to restore it to its proper role as the law of the land. That's all. Very simple. And I hear some of you saying, Bill, the Constitution is the law of the land. Why do we need to restore it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you this question. Just exactly when was the last time that you read it, that you read it? you really think that our government still abides by it? You see, the truth is that our politicians may swear an oath to the Constitution, but they knowingly and constantly and with malice aforethought violate and disregard it, making their sworn oaths as meaningless as their campaign promises. And we all know that every time an election comes up, they lie and tell us whatever we want to hear. And after they've been reelected, they go about their business and do what they want to do, flaunting it in our face, not even caring what we think. 
And some people in this country think that knowing they lied last time and then did something entirely different, that somehow that person has changed. And this time they're, they're not lying. And after we elect them, they're not going to do the opposite of what they said they were going to do. But they always do. They know the Constitution limits their powers. Just as you knew that the teacher limited your freedom in the classroom when you went to school as a child and you constantly were testing and pushing and trying to bend those limits and get more. See, I reached the conclusion a long time ago, ladies and gentlemen, that there's no such thing as adults. We're just wiser children. We're older, but we're the same people. All this adult stuff is based upon some kind of magic happening on your 21st birthday. But I defy anyone to show me a person who woke up on their 21st birthday who was not the same person they were the night before. Adult life, or so-called adult life in this nation, ladies and gentlemen, is not very much different than life on any American high school campus. And whatever you find there, you will find in Washington, or in Keokuk, or in Los Angeles, or Phoenix, or Boise, Idaho. Only instead of understanding that they're teenagers, they call themselves adults. And we don't seem to learn from history. Politicians know that under the Constitution they are our servants. We, the people, become the masters of our own fate. Our ignorance of the Constitution, ladies and gentlemen, is the single most important reason why our country is dysfunctional and failing. Our lack of knowledge of the Constitution is what allows the powers in federal government to proceed and strip us of our God-given freedoms, which they replace by granting us government privileges. A privilege, if you'll remember, is something your daddy can give to you tonight and take away tomorrow night. Like the keys to the Chevy, man. They take away a dollar, give us back a dime, and we are so happy, hilariously thrilled. We are their slaves. And most of us don't even know it. We are slaves through our own ignorance, apathy, and stupidity. Under the laws of the Constitution, the federal government doesn't have the power to deny us our liberty. Our battle as a nation isn't left versus right, ladies and gentlemen. These are illusions created to keep us occupied fighting amongst each other while they put the chains upon the ankles of all of us. Our battle is not between a man who has a black skin and a man who has a white skin or a man who is an Oriental versus a man who calls himself an American Indian, or any other version of that scenario, nor is it Christian against atheist or Buddhist against the followers of the Prophet Muhammad. You see, in this country, you have the freedom to practice your religion or no religion. Whatever you wish, as long as you do not injure the person or property of another. These are not our battles. These are illusions. These are scams to make us fight each other and thus strip our own rights away. 
our battle is the individual versus federal government. You see, divide and conquer is an old and classic means of playing people against one another as opposed to finding the common unity which binds us all. We're Americans. If you're an Irish American, get your butt back to Ireland. You may be an American. whose ancestors came from Ireland, and therefore you have a cultural heritage, but nevertheless you are an American. If you think you're an African American, get your butt back to Africa. Because I say you're an American. Or you're an African. You can be an American with an African cultural heritage brought to this world by your ancestors, but nevertheless you are an American. Asian American? What is that? That's foreign to the concept of someone who is a Korean versus someone who is a Japanese. Well, they hate each other, but they're both Asians, aren't they? You won't find them lumping themselves like that. They're either Korean or they're Americans. But not Korean Americans. Not Asian Americans. You'll find if you try to go back to those places after having been reared here, you will find you do not belong there, never have and never will. You belong here for you are an American. You just don't know it. Because somebody has scammed you into believing that you're not. Liberals and conservatives are not enemies. They are merely of different philosophies. It is the politicians within those movements that would enforce their values on others that really create the problem. You see, for them it's merely a means of extending their own power. Their own power. They don't care about you or me. Both Democrats and Republicans are guilty of passing laws in direct violation of the Constitution, no matter which is in power, no matter if it's a Republican president or a Democratic president, a Republican Congress or a Democratic Congress. It makes no difference. Look through history and you will see they are both guilty of passing laws in direct violation of the Constitution. In my estimation, treason. For example, Section 180102 of the new crime bill authorizes many government agents to seize a citizen's assets, sell them and divide the proceeds among the various agencies simply because that citizen is the object of an investigation. You are no longer innocent until proven guilty. Whether you are liberal or conservative, today you're guilty no matter what. And your property can be confiscated simply because some sniveling little bureaucrat who wants tons of power decides to take it. Due process of law is dead in America. Last year, over 250,000 Americans, that's 5,000 a week, had property seized without trial without just compensation as required by the Constitution, and 80% of them were never even charged with a crime. Virtually all of this property, ladies and gentlemen, was taken without indictment, trial, or conviction. Asset seizures have increased from $27 million in 1985 to over $2 billion in 1992, an increase of over 3,700%. Government agencies now target Americans based upon how much property they have, not upon what crimes they may have committed. In a police state, the government can legally seize anything you own and assault you while being unaccountable for their behavior. 
I believe sincerely that it is time to restore our personal freedoms which have been slowly but systematically taken from us, stripped from our back. I believe that if we as a people fail to act, the course on which the ship of state is currently set is clear an accelerating bankrupt socialist police state. To all Americans who want to keep their rights, whether it be the right to speak your mind, the right to keep the money you earn, the right to use your property as you wish, the right to bear arms for the defense of your family or from any threat, including government, the right for consenting adults to engage in sexual behavior of their own choice in their own bedroom, the right to not wear a seat belt or a motorcycle helmet, the right to practice or refrain from practicing any religion, the right to choose a doctor or the medicine and vitamins of your choice, the right to end your own life or the right to begin a life. These are your personal choices, not the government's. We can all have our rights if we just remember we are, all of us, sovereign individuals. Many of us remember growing up as a child being taught that America was the land of the free. We believed America set a shining example for the rest of the world to follow. We believed our forefathers died to gain liberty for themselves and their posterity, their heirs. We believe we went through two world wars to preserve this liberty and in some way give other countries the opportunity to have the same thing, but in their country and on their own, and on their own volition and own decision. We believe we did this to make certain that enemies from other governments did not take from us this, the most precious of all gifts. I'm sorry to say, ladies and gentlemen, I believe it is now time for action once again to preserve our freedom. We must begin by peacefully fighting our enemies, only this time they are within our own government, and we must form militias against the day that this is not successful. For in the end, there is only one sure way to maintain your freedom. And that is to be prepared to die for it. I love this nation. And I love the American people. Good night. And God bless you all.